Welcome, great beer lovers and enjoyer of brews from all over the world, especially from one specific country of which we're going to review their beer here today. What I've got is something that, uh, well, somebody asked me about a couple of months ago. Is, are there any good beers from Poland? I really didn't have an answer. So what I did was I went to my local brew store and went online and I actually found one. And they have it here, which is really good. Um, Zowiec. This is a brew from Poland. Hopefully I pronounced that right. And any of you Polish uh, individuals out there that can correct me, that's fine. My apologies. I'm American. I don't really know how to pronounce things very well. <laughs> but this is a beer from Poland. And we're going to look at it today. We're going to review it. We're going to find out what makes it tick. And we're going to do it on... All right, folks, glad you're with us today. Again, this is a brew that had been asked for or requested to see if I knew anything about it. And I'll be quite honest with you, I didn't. Now, I've had this before, uh, so it was something that I'm kind of familiar with. Truth be told, <laughs> I was actually going to do an episode on this uh, just before Thanksgiving. And come to find out, well... Um, the audio didn't work out too well. <laughs> kind of a shame too, because I enjoyed doing the beer. Um, this one here is from Poland. It's Zowiec. Okay. Um, hopefully again, I pronounced that correctly. I'm not Polish. So my apologies to any of the nice, beautiful people from Poland. Uh, if that's how you pronounce it, if it's not, Again, my apologies, but we're going to find out what makes this tick, and it's a it's a wonderful little brew. Of, uh, again, when I had it the first time, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It's a lager. It's from Poland. I expected a lot of great things from it, and I'll be quite honest with you, it didn't disappoint. Okay? Now, today we're going to be uh, doing it in our little stains here. This is our taller glass that we usually use for our lagers or and in this case it may sort of qualify as a pilsner but we're going to look and find out what it's like now let's go ahead remember we're going to be judging this on the five categories of the beer certification program the beer judge certification program that is the aroma the appearance the taste naturally the mouthfeel and of course the overall impression I can tell you when I had it the first time, yeah, it didn't disappoint. So I was real happy with it. Okay, let's get cracking on this one, okay? Now, I'm going to try to open it so you can hear it. I'm not going to shake it a little bit so it doesn't foam up too much, but we're going to see if we can hear it. So, ah, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Hopefully, you could hear that. I'll put it there. As usual, I like to put my little cap right there to kind of give it a little bit of appearance, a little bit of a, a little bit of a praise. Zowiec. Uh This is our beer from Poland. We're gonna pour it. I'm gonna pour it a little bit sideways. We can hear it going in here. And I'm gonna come down on it. I'm gonna get it a little bit glass proud. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And it's coming right to the top on target. Wow, can you believe that? I love it. Now, I'm going to turn the glass to the side here. And as we can see, it comes up to about right here. And then it was absolutely flush with the top. Very uh, glass proud there, I tell you what. As well, uh, we're going to be looking at its aroma. I can already smell it. I mean... Look, you're talking about Central Europe. You're talking about people who have lived their lives and their centuries brewing extremely good beers. They know how to do it. They're not fools. They know their business. So we're going to take a, take a smell of it. Ah, lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so to kind of give you an idea, if... You know, whenever we talked about the Oktoberfest beers last month, that was in October, October of 2023. To kind of date this a little bit here. It's right after Thanksgiving. Um, we talked about the water, 
the hops, the malt, and everything else that goes into a good beer, and especially those beers that are going to be the Oktoberfest beers, okay? You have an aroma. You have a, a nose about these that you smell and you go, wow, noble hops. This has got to have some noble hops in it. Noble hops being there's four of them. Tengnanger, Sots, um, Holotau, Middlefru, and a can't remember the other one. I always, I always forget that last one, but I'm going to find that out. Uh, so let me put that in the beer specs. Anyhow, I expected a lot out of it when I had it the first time. It didn't disappoint. We're going to go from there. But the aroma, a wonderful, wonderful hoppy. It's kind of an earthy, hoppy smell. Ah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just lovely. It, when you smell something like when you when you try this and you get that in your nose, you will never forget it. Again, this is much like a lot of the Central European German beers, Polish beers, Czech beers, Hungarian beers. Um, all those in that area are going to be historically unique. Well, that's, that's about the only way you can put it. They have passed that information and passed that technique down between the cultures for centuries, okay? So this is not going to be any different. You're going to love it. So the appearance. Uh, let's take a look at that. The aroma well, we already did. The appearance we saw that the foam came up to the being glass proud here. The foam started when I, when I finished was down here. It's actually coming back down a little bit. It's probably about three quarters to an inch thick. And it's starting to develop a little bit of a Brussels lace around this edge right here. Okay. Which is kind of good. The bubbles stay and they're effervescing from the bottom. There's bubbles on the bottom, which means there's a lot of good carbonation in this beer. You're going to really enjoy that part because it's going to help clean that palate for you between sips. It should be very light. In fact, if I remember, it was light being clean and crisp. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the color. Well, let's see if you can see this. Okay, uh, this I would say the color is going to be somewhere in the SRM of five, maybe six. I could be wrong. It's a little bit more golden. Um, it's not really amber, but very deep straw colored. Okay. Um, yeah, about a five or six. Okay. Um, I'm going to look that up and I'll put, it, put that in the beer specs if I can find it as well. Any of the IBU, anything else like that, international bittering units, uh, standard reference model, etc. So that's what that looks like. And if you can see the Brussels lace, hopefully you can. That should be around the top there, right, right around that edge. Now, it's still staying, okay, which means there's a lot of good proteins, a lot of good um, body to this beer that is going to stay with you, okay? Now, the moment of truth. Let's get it for the taste. Oh, yeah. Doesn't disappoint. Doesn't disappoint y'all. It actually has a little bit of an apple flavor to it. So it has kind of a green apple flavor to it. Really, actually, it isn't pretty bad. I prefer it. I like to have a little bit of a surprise to it whenever I drink a beer. Again, it's got carbonation to it. You're going to love that part. Now, when I poured it, a lot of the carbonation did come out. That's okay. I can definitely taste the malt. It's not sweet. It's dry. It refreshes. It cleanses. Of course, that's mouthfeel too. Hmm. Yes, definitely malty. The hops really isn't overpowering, but you can still taste it. I believe that's what's lending to the green in the green apple. The malt, of course, is going to lend to the, you know, to the apple flavor. And again, I want to show you the Brussels lace that still is present here. So after all I talk about Brussels lace, that's what I'm talking about, if you can see it. Hopefully I can zoom into it. I'll try that. Anyhow, the mouthfeel, I mentioned it just a few seconds ago. It's dry. It's crisp. It's clean. It, it gives you that 
sense that you're not going to be sitting here and just drinking something that just sits in your mouth. And it doesn't go into the back of your mouth and really presents a, a very sour, bitter aftertaste or anything else like that. I mean, you're going to figure hops may do that. You may have had a beer that did that. Um, and at 5.6% alcohol, 300 milliliters. Okay. So it's a 11.2 fluid. I'm kind of getting him... <laughs> I'm kind of getting used to looking at 330 milliliters and going, okay, that's 11.2 fluid ounces. Anyhow, but uh, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to feel heavy with this. And at 5.6% alcohol, you're not going to get that drunk that fast. I mean, you're looking at drinking an amount of beer at any particular time. Okay. Uh, here in America, we drink, we basically drink to get drunk. But there in Europe, they drink for the enjoyment of it. In fact, in some places, they consider beer food. Okay? So anyway, mouthfeel, you got that. Overall impression. I mean, come on. Just like any other good German brew, this beer is not going to disappoint. I mean, it's classic. Okay, it's like you're going to have your Czech Pilsners. It's like you're going to have your German Oktoberfest or your German Weiss beers or your Belgian uh, quadruples or uh, doppels. You know, you're going to have this right here is going to be absolute standard for the type of beer you're going to get in Poland and in that Central European area. Now, moving on, we are going to go through the beer specs and we're going to do it right now. The history of Zivijets Brewery dates back to the 19th century in Poland. Established in 1856 in the town of Zivijets by Archduke Albert Frederick of Habsburg, the brewery quickly gained prominence for its high quality beer production. Throughout its history, Zivijets Brewery faced various challenges, including economic downturns, wars, and challenges in ownership. However, it managed to preserve and maintain its reputation for crafting exceptional brews. In the late 18th century, Zivijets became part of the Heineken Group, which brought modernization and expansion to the brewery, allowing it to reach a wider market both nationally and internationally. Over the years, Zivijets Brewery has continued to innovate and adapt to changing consumer preferences while staying true to its brewing traditions. It has expanded its product line to include various beer styles, catering to different tastes. Today, Zivijets remains one of the most recognized and esteemed breweries in Poland. Known for its commitment to quality, heritage, and delivering a diverse range of beers to its customers, both in Poland and around the world. Zivijets Lager Style Polish Lager ABV 5.6% IBU 24 SRM 7 to 8 Well folks, I hope you enjoyed that segment there. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about Zivijets. Zivijets uh, Lager from Poland. I think it's a wonderful beer. I definitely suggest it. If you can find it, which I think you can, if I can find it here in my little town, I'm sure you can find it somewhere close to you, definitely go out and try it. Go out, enjoy it. Make sure it's cold, okay? Not like freezing cold. Don't put it, in, I mean, you can put it in the bottom freezer, bottom shelf of the, of the refrigerator, but don't make it really that absolute cold. Anyhow, I definitely want to say thank you for being here today. Remember, subscribe, okay? Ring that notification bell. Get notified on the next uh, exciting episode. Tell your friends about us, too. Let them know what we've got in our content here. Let them know that we've got a great beer review that I believe they're going to enjoy. Help spread the word. And remember, give us a thumbs up. It only just takes a few seconds. Like the video. Share the video. And be a part of our community here, okay? Give us some love. Other than that, <clears throat> I definitely want to say thank you again. If you get a chance, remember the Beer Review Logbook. 
Fantastic little book, um, $8.99 off of Amazon. You can't beat it. You take it, you put it in your pocket, you write down your beer experiences whenever you go to uh, a beer hunt. That's what I like to say. Uh, write it down. Remember what you've you've tried. You can even do this at home, which is really kind of great. If you're in the upstate of South Carolina, I believe it's only here. Yeah, kind of looked for it. The Upstate Ale Trail. The Upstate Ale Trail is our local uh, beer venue. You should say a little logbook there. Okay, it's got all the breweries in the, around the area, and we're popping them up all over the place here too. So, whatever's in here may or may not necessarily be updated. So, definitely keep an eye on this. Um, you can find them just about anywhere where they serve good brew, mostly tap rooms or breweries. Uh, pick it up; it's free, and mark down your experiences at those venues. I'm still trying to work with Total Wine to get them to do a PDF of this lovely little book here. This is my beer Bible. Holy Moses. It's the best book in the world for just taking with you and getting a quick reference of beer. If you could ever find it anywhere, get one. Okay. I don't even know if they're in print anymore, but definitely try to see if you can find it. It's a wonderful little book. And, um, as you're reviewing your beer, and I've got to get a new one of these because it's getting a little tattered. This is the Beer Judge Certification Beer Score Sheet. Okay. Um, it's really kind of handy. Look, um, if you like to take a log of your reviews, uh, you can absolutely print it out. I got the link down below in the description and the little doobly doo down there. And uh, you take it, you print it out, and you write down your you know, your judgment of certain brews. Um, along the line here, along this side, you got the five categories. Remember the aroma, the appearance, the taste, the mouthfeel, and of course the overall impression. You write all that down there. And on the right hand side here, you have a list of off flavors that can help you in diagnosing what you're tasting in a beer. If it doesn't quite taste right, and sometimes this does, you can be able to diagnose it there. Now, Remember again, subscribe, okay? Ring that notification bell. Let yourself know when we have another episode come out. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like, help spread the word, tell your friends about it. Yeah. Give them, the, give them the address here, we don't care, we love it. And leave a comment down below in the description. We wanna hear from you. This was a comment from a viewer that asked about the Polish beers, guess what I did? I went out and I found one. So feel free to ask away. I'm more than happy to see if I can find one. If I can, I'll find it and review it for you. How about that? Other than that, listen, thank you for being with us today. And as we always say, Prost! Chin Chin! Can Pie! Salud! Slancha! And of course, in America, cheers. Mm, wonderful. The Polish know how to make beer. I tell you what, peace, love, and beer.